second grade, Mrs. Dorgan here. Say, we talked about uh, hearing a story about a, a saint called Tekla of Ethiopia. And um, that means that he was a real person that lived a very long time ago. Um, and he is a saint. So um, he's pretty cool. So we're, I'm going to read the story, A Saint and His Lion, the story of Tekla of Ethiopia. Long, long ago in Ethiopia, there lived a goat herd and his wife in the village of Zorare. All they had in the world was a vegetable patch, a herd of goats, and a tukul, a hut of sticks and mud. Despite this, they were happy except for one thing. They had no children. One evening, a strange star appeared over their tuckle. The villagers whispered excitedly, oh, Something special must be about to happen. Suddenly, a wail rose from the hut. The couple's long-awaited baby had arrived. A perfect little boy. But why the star? And why over this tuckle? Sounds familiar to me. King Amlak learned about the star and sent for the parents and their child. When they arrived at the palace, the king asked, What's the boy's name? Your Majesty, replied the goat herd, we plan to name him Tekla, in honor of one of the first Christians. But, added his wife, our son has not yet been baptized. We left home just as soon as you asked. Well, in that case, said King Amlak, he shall be baptized here in the cathedral. The next Sunday, Tekla was christened by the Abuna, or Ethiopian bishop. I baptize you, Tekla Hymeno, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Abuna plunged the baby into the water three times, then held him high for all to see. <gasps> Without warning, the wet baby slipped from his hands. Tekla dropped toward the stone floor in certain death, but no, his fall suddenly stopped, and he hung, suspended in midair. <gasps> Look, cried his mother, an angel has saved him. It's a miracle, shouted the king. Silently he wondered, who is this amazing child? And what is to be his destiny? The family returned to their village where Tekla quickly grew into a strong, active boy. One day, while he was climbing the tallest tree he could find, a branch snapped. He lost his balance and fell down, 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 landing with a hard thud. This time, no angel hands saved him. <gasps> oh dear, Tekla's leg was badly broken. Unable to walk, he lay suffering on his mat in his dark, small tukul. Week followed week, but his leg did not heal. Every day, his body grew thinner and frailer. Oh, dear. Abba Salama, the village priest, prayed over the boy, returning every day to read to him from the Bible. Tekla began to look forward to these visits. He memorized the scripture he heard, and as his knowledge of the Bible grew, so did his strength. In time, he told his parents, if you make me a small crutch, I think I can walk again. Then I will help you tend the goats. Tekla's father whittled him a crutch from a forked branch. The boy hobbled off, the goats bleating around him. His parents were overjoyed, but the villagers were disappointed. What of the star? What of the angel? Was this not the same child? Who was to bring fame to them? As the years passed, it was obvious that Tekla would always need a crutch to walk. Mm, that boy has no future, 
The villager said, he will never be a great warrior or a prince. <laughs> Tekla knew they were right. He would never be a great warrior or a prince. But he loved the Bible and he loved the church. Perhaps he could be a priest. When he was 14, he told Abba Salama his dream. My son, Abba Salama said sadly, no monastery would ever take you. A priest must be strong to walk from village to village preaching the gospel. With your leg, you could never do these things. But you will make a fine shepherd. No, cried Tekla. I want to be a shepherd of men. I can walk with my crutch. See? That night, Tekla put his possessions into a sack, kissed his parents as they slept, and crept silently out into the cold. He stumbled along the moonlit path toward the ancient monastery of Debra Damo, high on a hill. Hours later, exhausted, he lay down under a bush to sleep. He was awakened by a sound like a baby crying. Through the bushes he saw a lion. A deep gash ran down its leg and blood dripped from its paw. Tekla was afraid, but he was also filled with pity. Anbasa, he exclaimed which is the Ethiopian word for lion. You are hurt like me. I will help you. He pulled an extra shawl from his sack and bandaged the lion's leg. All the while, the beast purred and rubbed his great head against the boy's arm. After bringing him water, Tekla said, Goodbye, Anbasa. I will pray that you recover. Wearily, the boy continued up the rocky path to the monastery. At dawn, he arrived at the base of the towering cliff. With his last bit of strength, he shouted, In the name of the Holy Trinity, let down the basket. I am Tekla Heimano of Zorare, and I have come to be a priest. Slowly, a swaying basket was lowered down the face of the cliff. Remember, they don't have elevators at that time. Tekla climbed in, and the basket was pulled back up. He felt as if angel hands were pulling him to heaven. At the top, he found himself surrounded by monks of all ages, dressed in yellow robes and turbans. Why? It's only a boy, cried the monks. With a bad leg at that, said another. Just then the stately old abbot came out of the square rock church. Come with me, he said kindly. Tell me why you are here. I want to become a priest, Tekla said. I want to tell everyone about Jesus. The holy man smiled. It's difficult work. You must stay here and study hard for many years. But if you are willing to learn, we shall be glad to teach you. And if that is what you really want, then God will surely help you gain your heart's desire. Tekla fell to his knees, placing his small hands between the wrinkled brown palms of the abbot's hands, he said, I promise to give my life to Jesus and to serve him with all my heart. Tekla was 20 years old when he made his vows as a priest. The very next day, he was lowered down the cliff to start his new life as a missionary. He had walked barely a mile, not very far, when his crutch snapped and he fell to the ground. Again and again he tried to stand, but his crooked leg wouldn't support him. He could go no farther. Vultures gathered in the trees, waiting for him to die. 
Just then, a tremendous roar startled him. Poised on a rock stood a lion ready to leap. Tekla cried out, Lord, save me. At the sound of his voice, the lion stood still. It started to purr, jumped from the rock, and rubbed his huge head against him. Tekla saw the long white scar on the lion's leg. Anbasa, how did you recognize me after all these years? After petting the animal, Tekla said, I am sorry, my old friend, but I must be on my way now to do the Lord's work. He tried to stand. Without a crutch, his leg buckled with each attempt. He couldn't get up. Anbasa nudged him, then laid down on his side. Tekla lifted his good leg across the lion's broad back. Then the majestic animal rose to his feet and trotted off with Tekla holding onto his mane. Hmm. The strange pair loped off towards Zorare and entered the village at a trot. Tekla held up a cross in blessing, but the villagers, oh, they ran off. Help, help, they screamed. A lion! Tekla called, don't be afraid. This is Anbasa, my friend. His mother ran forward and embraced her son, gave her a big hug. His proud father said, welcome home. Will you stay here and be the priest in Zarare? Mm, Tekla shook his head. No, father, I must travel to the Galas. They have not heard the good news of our holy faith. And because I cannot walk, God has provided this lion to carry me. Tekla said goodbye to his family and friends, then directed Anbasa toward the rugged hills on Ethiopia's western border. After many days, the pair reached the land of the Galas. The wild tribesmen took one look at the little priest riding a lion and dropped their spears in astonishment. They fell on their knees before Decla and begged him to baptize them. In this way, traveling from tribe to tribe, Tekla converted a hundred thousand fierce galas during his lifetime. That's way more than the people that can fit into Safeco Field. Just so you know, it's a lot, lot of people. When war broke out between King Amlak and a rival prince, Tekla negotiated a peace between them that lasted 500 years. After his death, he was proclaimed a saint by the Ethiopian church. Not even a bad leg could keep this brave priest from his holy task. And with the help of his faithful lion, Tekla Hemano fulfilled the prophecy of the star at his birth. He became more famous than any warrior or prince. So I hope you enjoyed that story. I really did. I really liked the story, especially about the lion and um, Tekla just getting out there, you know, and just spreading his faith. So. I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.